All right, let's continue for July 19, 2011. Now we're going to get into Luke 21, 25. This is a prophecy uh, that Jesus talks about the storms. And, and you'll see that in Luke 21, 25, there are different things mentioned there. But I want to cover uh, the storms and what we're seeing in the current events. Let me read what the Bible says, what Jesus tells us to look for in the last days. And he says this in verse 25, And there shall be signs in the sun. Obviously, we're seeing those signs. If you've been to my site yesterday, uh, I've been posting the, posting the intense heat uh, that the United States has been seeing and some other places around the world like Somalia and Sudan and uh, the Horn of Africa where the, the sun's heat has just uh, taken its toll on the crops and many are starving. But it goes on to say, not only will there be signs in the sun, it, go, it says this, And in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth, distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and waves roaring. Now, we know that the wind pushes the seas and the waves. We know what do, does that. It's the storms that push the waves, the wind, the sea, and so there, it's really a no-brainer as to what Jesus is telling us here. Now, as the sun, we see in that same scripture, is going to have uh, the signs in the last days, we know that the intense heat is melting glaciers and it's raising the sea level. And the scientists are coming out with all kinds of documentations. My book is loaded with the documentations recent documentations that show that the sea level is rising. So as the water rises and as the weather changes, then we see when the storms do come, these massive storms, then the water is elevated, it goes further on shore and it does more damage. And as it does, notice in the scripture that the Lord tells us the nation's distressed with perplexity. We've seen this in the past. We've seen this with the Asian tsunami. Uh, we've seen this with the storms uh, that I've been posting. For example, huge storms in Indonesia, in China, the United States, in different parts of the world. And uh, these are all part and parcel for the signs that we were supposed to watch. Now, let me post a uh, a news article from Science Daily that this was just a few days ago, July 15th of 2011. You can see it says strong El Nino coast. Um, in case you can't see that, let me read it for you. You can go to my website www.bibleprophecyman.com and see this. Click it. You'll get the link there. It says El Nino should bring in Increased sea levels, strong surges to U.S. East Coast. Central communities along the U.S. East Coast may be at risk at higher sea levels accompanied by more destructive storm surges in future El Nino years, according to the new study by the NOAA. The study was prompted by an unusual number of destructive storm surges along the East Coast during the 2009 through the 2010 El Nino water. Notice the first thing that I want to point out here, that it talks about the unusual number of destructive uh, storms. Well, in Mark chapter 13, verse 8, Jesus told us that these events were going to happen as a woman with labor. And so, don't be surprised when you see that the storm surges are increasing because this is exactly what Jesus told us was going to happen in the end times. It says the study led by Bill Sweet, PhD from the NOAA Center of Operational Oceanographic Products and Services examined water levels and storm surge events during the cool season of October to April for the past five decades at four sites representative of much of the East Coast, Boston, Atlantic City, New Jersey, North Fork, Virginia, and Charleston, South Carolina. From 1961 to 2010, it was found that the strong El Nino years, these coastal areas experienced nearly three times 
the average number of storm surge events defined as those of one foot or greater. The research also find that waters in those areas saw a third of a foot elevation in mean scene level above predicted conditions. High water events are already a concern for coastal communities. Studies like this may better prepare local officials who plan uh, for or respond to conditions that may impact their communities. It's already impacted many of the communities and caused these complex problems that Jesus told us were coming against uh, or upon the nations in the last days. Now, if you've been watching the weather, you're probably very aware that we're starting to see these strange weather patterns, strange uh, the weather changing in many parts of the world where it should be hot, it's cold, where you should have snow, it's, it looks like the desert. Uh, for example, in the United States, Oklahoma, Texas, uh, drought conditions, heat conditions. Now, where we have triple digit numbers in the week of July, uh, this week right now, from uh, which is the July 19th, this whole week they're expecting triple digits all the way up into Montana. And this is unheard of. So listen to this article. This is an article that just came out. It's uh, which actually June 2011. It's fairly recent, but I want to show you what they're saying. It says lengths that, well, first of all, the headline is Seasons Changing in Bangladesh. The lengths of the winter, summer, and rainy seasons in Bangladesh have increased while spring has decreased. Changes that are likely to have an adverse impact on agriculture, said the study based on the farmer's perceptions. Winter, uh, traditionally around two and a half months long, now prevails for three uh, and three quarters, while summer takes five months, almost double the past usual length. Now these are unusual conditions what they're talking about. On the other hand, rainy season normally two and three quarters prevails for around three and a half months, while spring is now one and a half months, nearly half a month less than before. Autumn and late autumn continue to remain the same, it says. It is expected that an increase in the length of summer seasons will adversely influence crop plant and plantation and increase in the rainy season will adversely impact uh, ripening and harvesting. In other words, these conditions are taking an effect on the crops. The study, a perception study, climate change and food security in South Asia was conducted from October to November 2010 and 1,000 200 farmers, 300 each from Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. The farmers revealed their uh, experience on climate change during the past 11 uh, to 20 years, so it's a long-term uh, study there. Consequently, poor farmers trying to ensure their food security cannot completely depend neither on farm outputs nor on the market as food prices are volatile, he says. Now this is going to go back to rest respect to what Jesus said in Revelation 6.6 6, where he shows us that in the last times people will be working all day long for a very, very small amount of food. Enough for one person, a quart of wheat, for example, we see in the book of Revelation. And so the weird weather, the patterns that are causing a drenching of the crops or burning them out by the sun or not enough light all these things are taking place and they're the exact same uh, results of what Jesus warned about. It says most of the study's respondents said both frequency and intensity of climate induced disasters are increasing. So not only do you have you know like 1,200 uh, farmers who have a long-term study about the weather showing you that these uh, events are going uh, at, our, at a quicker pace, they're increasing. This is exactly the birth pangs from Mark 13, 8. Jesus warned it, and it is happening in our generation while all the other prophecies 
are taking place. Now here is another one I want to talk about. This is a prophecy. Actually, there's three of them. You can go into Hosanna chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, Ezekiel chapter 38, verse 20, and also in Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 3. Now all of those prophecies there that I just gave to you deal with the warning that the fish will die, the animals will die, and so the birds. This is one of the, the uh, effects of the last days. Now, on my post at my website, if you go there, I have a link to my previous uh, post, and it gives you every, every lesson that I could possibly give that shows you a list of fish, birds, and animals dying. And uh, it's a really comprehensive list, but these things are actually taking place. Now, what I wanted to tell you that for is because in this article, it, there's reasons why, for example, the fish are dying. And this article that came out, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it, but it says 2011 Gulf of Mexico dead zone could be bigger ever. You should be able, I'm going to hold it there just for a second, you should be able to focus there. But don't worry about it if you can't. You can go to my website. You can see it there. It says, researchers from Texas A&M University have returned from a trip to examine the scope and size of this year's dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico and have measured it currently to be about 3,300 square miles or roughly the size of Delaware and Rhode Island combined. But some researchers anticipate uh, is becoming much larger. Oceanic Professor Steve DeMarco, one of the country's leading authorities at the dead zone, says the team of researchers joined more than 1,400 miles throughout the Gulf over the five-year period, the first ever focusing on the month of June. DeMarco says the size of the dead zone off the coast of Louisiana has been routinely monitored for about 25 years, and previously research has also shown that the Nitrogen levels in the Gulf tripled over the past 50 years during the past five years. The dead zone has averaged about 5,800 square miles and has been predicted to exceed 9,400 square miles this year, which would make it one of the largest ever recorded, according to Louisiana University's uh, Marine Consortium. So what you have here you have depletion of oxygen in the water. And when this happens, you have fish, who's ever in that water, cannot breathe and they die off. Now, do you find it interesting, at least I do, that it says these dead zones are increasing? Now, again, these are the signs of Mark 13, 8, the uh, birth pangs that Christ talked about. Not only did he talk about it in, uh, in Mark, but he also gives us this information in, in another place in first, uh, when you look in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, where Paul's warning about the peace and safety, he is telling us that when you read that scripture, it, it comes as a woman travails with birth pangs. And this is what we're seeing, the birth pangs of this weird weather, the intense heat, the storms, the ice melting, rising the, the water level. And when we have the storms, we have the complex problems, more floodings, flash floods. All of these are signs of the times, and all of them are taking place at the same time. You have a choice. You can believe what the Lord says, or you can dismiss it as falsehood, but I would recommend that you would listen to what the Lord says because he's doing what he can to make you understand that we're running out of time and he wants you in heaven. But the only way that you can get there is by accepting Christ as your Savior.